everyone. My name is Ari and welcome to Made of Metal, a motivational podcast where we tell stories about regular people overcoming insurmountable odds. A warm welcome, my friends, to another wonderful episode of Made of Metal with myself, as you're sometimes wise and always whimsical, Wordsmith. <laughs> I'm always so proud of myself when I'm able to pull this part of the episode together. Definitely a bit of an exercise for me, but I love it. Wow. So it's the week of April 10th and I'm absolutely teeming with excitement. I've been hearing such great feedback from you guys on the content and the people we're learning about each week. It's so encouraging and thank you so much. If you're loving the podcast and would like to help spread the word, please do tell a friend or two. That goes a long way. And thank you so much in advance. So last week, we learned about the oh-so-humble beginnings of Stephen Hawking and so much about his discoveries in cosmology. I personally have always been obsessed with the stars. Huge hippie, you guys know that. So I've been deep diving into the subject of the universe and the individuals who personally contributed to all the amazing info we've learned about it thus far. And with that in mind, I wanted to balance it out and also feature an individual who contributed so much to the foundational discoveries of science and space as we know it. Now, this individual was largely a self-study in the field of astronomy, which completely challenged social norms at the time about the type of person who was usually seen in that field. Hint, hint, it was all men. So this individual was also an activist and a philanthropist in their own right, pioneering an educational system that could have put their own livelihood in danger. But for the sake of education and the greater good, this individual was willing to risk it all. And not to mention, I have a personal respect for any fellow stargazers and people who pursue astronomy. I took it in college because, like I said, I've always been obsessed with the stars in the universe. And the math was just astoundingly difficult. Like, I am a writer, totally literature, writing, anything like that. I can pump out a paper like it's nothing, but math, oh no. So I just know all too painfully the level of complexity and dedication it takes to pursue astronomy. And I just have so much respect for the people that do, truly. And again, I knew very little about this person and their discoveries, which is always a fun time for me to learn while doing the research for these episodes. So this week we'll be discussing... The stargazer, the school teacher, the supporter, Maria Mitchell. Maria Mitchell was born August 1st, 1818, in Nantucket, Massachusetts. Maria was the third child born to her parents, Lydia and William. Maria would have a total of nine other siblings when it was all said and done. So a huge family. Maria's parents were Quakers, which was a large religious group based in the northeastern part of the U.S. at the time. And one of the main pillars of the Quaker religion is education. And not just for men, a lot of the culture within the religion encouraged education at all levels and for women as well. Maria's mother worked at a library and her father was a teacher and amateur astronomer. Of course, during the early 1800s, it was quite unusual for women to be considered for any type of formal schooling. But as Quakers, Maria's family was the exception. At an early age, all of the children were encouraged to take a proactive approach to their education with the girls being given the same opportunities to learn as the boys. It was also in part due to the unique nature of the area that the family lived in. So Nantucket at the time was a thriving port, which had many of the men within the town working aboard the ships. 
As such, they would be away from home for long stretches on the seas, leaving their fares at home to the women who were left behind. This living arrangement encouraged a level of freedom and independence that was not often seen in many other places within the U.S. Maria's mother also encouraged the kids to utilize her access to the library, which was considered a huge resource for them to explore their interests and pursuits. Maria was able to take advantage of this lenient atmosphere and regularly expressed her interest in learning more about the stars to her parents. Either she was inspired by her father or it ran in the family. In both cases, Maria was in good company. Maria and her siblings would attend school where her father worked until her father decided to leave and start his own school. And I'm really loving this family atmosphere already. It seems Maria's father and mother were right on step in encouraging the children to become educated and aware of the world around them, really empowering them as children, which is awesome. While Maria was attending her father's school, she was also assisting him with his teaching. And while they were home, her father was also teaching her more about astronomy. In 1831, while Maria was still a young girl, her and her father would chart their first solar eclipse, a huge feat for a young lady. Her father's school would eventually shut its doors, but this was not the end of Maria's education. Quite the contrary. Maria would transfer to another school in the area where she would again work alongside the teacher as an assistant, as she was more well-versed in her peers in the nuances of teaching. Maria was so good at teaching that she too would open her own school at the tender age of 17, which is just amazing in and of itself. I mean, I know 17 back then was very different, but I mean, that is still pretty darn cool. But it wasn't just opening her own school that was amazing. Maria would also open her school to people of color something that was completely out of social norms at the time. I mean, I should also mention that the Quakers were staunch supporters of anti-slavery movements, so it wasn't unusual in that aspect. Maria was right on par with her upbringing as she taught students of all backgrounds, even employing new teaching methods that she had developed herself. All throughout this time, Maria and her father continued to work closely together on several discoveries within the stars, exploring more of what was truly out there. By this time, Maria was as experienced with astronomy as her father, with working knowledge of how to use intricate instruments and telescopes to chart their discoveries. When Maria was 18, she would take a job at the Nantucket Athenaeum which was essentially her local library, where she would begin an almost 20-year career. <laughs> and I just have to say, my dream job has always been to work at a giant local library and spend my off time just like, you know, checking out the stars. <laughs> like this girl was living the dream for real. While little documents remain from Maria during her early adulthood, we do know that she continued to pursue knowledge in astronomy fervently, which is what led her to make one of the greatest astronomical discoveries of all time. It was on a clear night at almost 11 p.m. on October 1st, 1847. Maria would often spend her nights in an observatory that was built on the roof of her father's job, gazing at the stars, charting, and essentially keeping her eyes on her skies. But this night was different. Maria observed a bright light shooting across the sky and put her eye to her telescope. Lo and behold, Maria witnessed a comet shooting across the sky. I can only imagine her excitement in this moment, as I'm sure she was informed enough on the night sky to understand that she had just witnessed a once-in-a-lifetime event. Like, that must have been so just incredible. Maria would report her discovery in a journal a few months later under her father's name. And the next month, she published the data charting the comet's orbit. 
Of course, the reasoning behind this was that there was no women who are allowed to publish scientific work in a journal and be taken seriously. It could have brought great shame and criticism to her family, whom she was still very much close with. Once it was confirmed that Maria was indeed the person who made this historic discovery, the scientific world was in an uproar and Maria became a sensation. The comet was previously completely unknown and subsequently given the name of Miss Mitchell's Comet. In 1848, Maria would receive a gold medal from the King of Denmark for her discovery. The King of Denmark was a particularly avid astronomer himself and wanted to honor Maria for her achievement. This award had incredible significance as Maria was the first American to receive it and simultaneously the first woman to win an award for their contributions to astronomy. After this recognition, Maria continued to rise in popularity as her discovery and award became front page news all over the country. And of course, I had to mention this because it absolutely blew my mind, though I I shouldn't be surprised by it at this point. But, you know, here he is again. Maria would meet a few fellow academics after her discovery, such as Herman Melville, Sojourner Truth, and none other than the man of the freaking century himself, Frederick Douglass. I mean, it truly seems like I can't tell a story about someone's life without Frederick Douglass making an appearance. I mean, the man knew how to network. (laughs) End of story. Just that very next year, Maria would take a position with the U.S. Coast Survey, charting the movements of Venus and essentially continuing her research on the skies. In 1850, Maria would join the American Association for the Advancement of Science, truly a first, where she met Joseph Henry, who was the founder of the Smithsonian Institution. Maria would even continue her work abroad, traveling to Europe to view observatories as well as learn from other women astronomers, such as Mary Somerville and Caroline Herschel. Maria would receive another great honor in 1865, when she was appointed as the first woman professor of astronomy at Vassar College. This was a first for the college, especially considering that with all of her knowledge, Maria herself had never obtained a college education. Even through all of her research and education, Maria still had time to dedicate to activism. Maria protested slavery early on by participating in anti-slavery campaigns, such as refusing to wear clothes that were made with cotton sourced from the South, as well as attending anti-slavery conventions. Maria would also help to further the women's rights and suffrage movement, as she was directly involved in founding the Association for the Advancement of Women, which specifically helped advocate for women to obtain higher education. Maria was an avid supporter for women's right to work, as well as to participate in research in the sciences, spaces that women were historically barred from due to sexism and stereotypes of the time. Maria would work on her various research projects, astronomy discoveries, anti-slavery and women's rights advocacy in tandem with her teaching at Vassar College. This woman worked hard while still making time to return home and spend time with her family. Maria never retired, but worked until she was physically unable to which was about one year before her passing. Maria Mitchell passed away June 28, 1889, at the age of 70 in her hometown of Nantucket, Massachusetts. She never married and would often spend time with her family back home, where she passed. Maria would receive several accolades and awards even after her death with a foundation called the Maria Mitchell Association established in her honor, 
as well as the Maria Mitchell Observatory dedicated in her name. She was also inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1994 for her achievements, as well as having a large crater on the moon named after her, just like Miss Mitchell's comet. God, I can never get enough of a story about a person who takes life into their own hands, regardless of the circumstances handed to them. Instead of allowing life to dictate her limitations, Maria took the radical approach of carving her own path, using her resources and not allowing the societal obstacles formed against her to stop her. Also, I mean, big ups to her mother and father for being so supportive and present in her life to encourage her to pursue her passions for the stars. I admire people who go after their passions so much because that road isn't always easy. But in the end, it could not have been more satisfying for her. I mean, she literally had to teach herself so much, but then had the patience, ability, and foresight to teach others while continuing her own learning and development. Someone who was denied a college education based on her gender was then appointed to a position as a college professor based on the merit of her own invaluable research and scientific contributions. Maria truly kept her eyes on the skies in more ways than one, and it paid off in ways I'm sure even she couldn't have imagined. Now, I wanted to share this quote from Maria as well because I just love ending these episodes on a great quote. You guys know I love a great quote, but I also think it demonstrates the incredible growth and insight that Maria had as being a woman of science, seeing both of these worlds for what it was in ways that we could never understand. So here it goes. In my younger days, when I was painted by the half-educated, loose, and inaccurate ways women had, I used to say, how much women need exact science. But since I have known some workers in science, I have now said, how much science needs women. So you can check out our website at madeofmetalpodcast.com. And you can also follow us on Instagram or Facebook. And that's Made of Metal, M-E-T-T-L-E. We're also on YouTube under the same name, Made of Metal. Thank you so much for listening. It is just such a pleasure to meet you guys here every week to do this research, to do this writing for you guys. And to be so appreciated for it. It is, I mean, truly a privilege. And I mean, so cliche. I'm sure you guys are <laughs> thinking that. But when I say I love each and every one of you, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I am truly blown away by the support. Thank you so, so much. And please do not forget to bloom where you are planted. Bye.